So, uh, yeah, one, one thing which I must state at the outset is that insects are small, they have small brains, they have very simple nervous systems as compared to, say, larger animals. So, despite this very simple kind of a nervous system, they can achieve a tremendous amount of diversity in terms of behaviors or in terms of uh, uh, capabilities that they can collectively achieve. So, there is no, uh, even if you look at, say, social insects, and social insects are the considered the pinnacle of social evolution or group living, right? So, even if you look at social insects, for instance, if you look at bee colonies, where you know that there is a queen and then there are worker cars, and among the workers, there are individuals that do different kinds of behaviors. So, for example, there are bees that do uh, uh, forage or go out and collect food. There are other bees that take care of hygiene within the colony so that the colony stays free of diseases. There are other bees that take care of the, of the developing young ones. And there are still others that uh, build hives, you know, replenish hives, all of these things. So, it becomes very fascinating for us to try and understand how are these behaviors determined. Why, is, why does one individual do one thing and another individual do another thing? And how do they collectively know who has to do what? So, in the case of bees, we know that this kind of what we call task partitioning is very, very efficiently achieved, uh, uh, which is why it is, you know, a, an excellent model system for uh, looking at social uh, so, so, uh, sociality as well as cooperative behaviors as with uh, uh, termites like you said. So, um, what we need to understand is that insects, there is no, like I said, there is no one controlling individual. So, this is often genetically fixed or it is driven by age. For example, the younger individuals do a particular kind of task and the older ones do a different kind of task. And this is all driven by genetic expression or levels of various hormones and so on and so forth. In bees, for instance, we know that there is one hormone which is called the juvenile hormone, which is actually responsible for the switch from doing things within the colony or within the hive to making trips outside to collect food. Okay? So, this is driven by various physiological processes and there is no one controlling individual, but however, they do manage to, uh, you know, so there is no, uh, you know, super intelligent kind of a colony status. Everyone does what they are supposed to do and they have a way of perceiving the needs of the colony within this limited uh, framework. So, in that sense, I mean, like, I think bees have been an, an interesting uh, uh, organism uh, to look at, as with ants. Ants have a fantastic array of uh, social behaviors. Same with termites. Termites are not insects, uh, typically, but yes, uh, termites too, and uh, also uh, uh, various other insects that we can think of.